Is that some sort of a sign? I think I should probably open that box. Okay, we've got an assorted box of about 20 digital cameras in here. They're a combination of DSLR cameras and point and shoot digital cameras. I paid $275 for this box, and I'm hoping that we'll hit a value of 600 plus. So let's go ahead and open the box and get started. And if you're new here, hi, my name's Kevin. Uh, my full-time job is actually buying and selling used digital cameras. And I got this at an auction that I want online. All of these are untested cameras, by the way, as is usual for these untested lots. I filmed quite a few videos about these, and it's one of the most fun parts of my job. So I see quite a bit of Canon, Nikon, and Sony to start, so that's, uh, that's good. Definitely prefer name brands if we can get it. Slide you over there a little bit so we have a little bit of room to show the cameras. First camera, we've got a Canon PowerShot A570. And I always double check the AA battery tray. That's the first thing that could cause an issue is corrosion inside the tray. There is a little bit here on the side, uh, but really doesn't look too bad. We'll go ahead and put a memory card in there. LCD's got some wire, but uh, it looks okay. Noisy. Lens glass looks good, just needs a little bit of a cleaning. And why are we all on digital zoom here? Oh, we're on playback, okay. There we go. Yeah. Oh, the uh, the toggle between the play and the shoot button, very loose. So it kind of actually just fell down by itself. You can see that. So normally this is a, a stiffer uh, button here and it may have to do with some of the wear up here. Let's try taking a picture and see if that works. Yeah, flash fires. So this camera is working, but it does have some cosmetic issues and quite a bit of wear. Uh, in excellent condition, the A570 sells for in the $50 to $75 range. However, in this condition with that kind of loose play shoot button, uh, we're looking at a value in the $35 range for this camera. But every working camera will take us closer to the $600 target, so I'd rather have a semi-working camera than a broken one. Okay, next up, we've got a Nikon Coolpix L26 digital camera. And this is a 16 megapixel with, I believe, a 5x optical zoom. Takes pretty good pictures. Double A tray looks good. Slap some double A's in there. You know, working by yourself, and I'm alone in the office most of the day, it can be a little bit tiring. And uh, it's nice to be able to shoot videos like this that can kind of share little bit of what I do in my daily life with, uh, with all you out there. Really appreciate the viewership as always. And if you haven't yet, click that button down there to subscribe. I really appreciate it. It helps me continue to make videos like this. It really means a lot. Okay, so we've got the camera powered on. We're moving the zoom in and out. It looks good. Actually, I would say the condition of this camera looks really good. Let's go ahead and try taking a picture real quick. Flash fires. Glass looks great. And I'll go ahead and delete the pictures on there. So if you pair this Nikon Coolpix L26 with a memory card and potentially a USB cable if you got it, you'd be looking at a value in the $50 range, maybe a little bit more on this Nikon Coolpix L26. All right, well, might as well continue with another Nikon Coolpix. And this is the Nikon Coolpix L20. And there was like three or four variations between the L20 and the L26, which we just looked at. Uh, biggest issues with this, just like the L26, are going to be that corrosion in the battery uh, area. Okay, this one has a completely broken door. So whenever you try to shut it normally, it won't even stay locked. So we've got a broken uh, plastic piece here that enables the door to shut. So the it's not actually locking into place. My guess is if we fix this down really hard like this and just push down on it, that the camera will power on. It does. I'm just gonna go ahead and show you if it is working. Okay, yeah, lens moves. Let's, let's try moving the lens and taking a picture. I can't really move it from this position it's in, otherwise it's just gonna turn off. There we go. 
So this camera is working, um, but the battery door is completely broken. And you can use like a tape or something to uh, temporarily affix it until you need to change the AA batteries. So you could get this into a semi-working condition by doing that, uh, but the value is going to drop substantially. So with the broken door in working condition on the Coolpix L20, I would probably sell this for 15 to 20 bucks, pretty nominal value, once you factor in free shipping. Not much meat left on that bone. All right, three down, and only $100 in projected value so far. Yikes. All right, next up, we've got a Sony, and this is a Sony DSC S500. No AA batteries. A little bit of wear in the AA tray uh, in the rear area. Loose battery tray on this one as well, and there's a little bit of a chip right there. It's huh. not ideal. Let's uh, power it on and see if it takes a picture without any pressure on the battery door. No. Let's try it with pressure on the battery door. No. Okay. Well, I'm going to work on this one a little bit more. Uh, it appears that the corrosion in the rear area may be actually affecting the camera uh, from powering on. Uh, so I won't assign any value on this, but even if we get it working, the DSC S500 doesn't have a lot of value in great working condition, 35 to 45. Okay, next up, we've got a Canon PowerShot SD1200 in gray. And this is a very popular camera along with the SD1100 and SD1300, as well as the SD1400. Stop there on the SD line. Uh, it uses the NB6L battery, and the value of this camera has gone up quite a bit. I've been doing this full-time now for seven years and more, uh, if you factor in part-time. And this used to be a camera even three or four years ago that was selling for 75 in good working condition. And the value of this camera has gone up into the $125 to $150 range over that time. It does power on. Lens moves in and out fine and actually appears to be in pretty good shape for its age. A Little bit of lens noise, but that's common with this model. Let's go ahead and try taking a picture. Nice. Okay. So uh, there is some wear on the rear part of the camera here, but the LCD, as you can see, actually looks really quite nice. So I would say this camera is in good working condition. You pair it with an SD card, a USB cable, and a charger, and you're looking at a value of about 125 bucks on this. Okay, next up, another Sony. We've got a Sony DSC S90, which is a AA powered four megapixel digicam. Let's try some AA's. Battery compartment looks pretty good. A little bit of wear, very minor. I think this uses Memory Stick Pro. Or Memory Stick Pro Duo, perhaps, for memory. Memory Stick Pro, okay. That's the long, skinny one. This is a Memory Stick, and the Memory Stick Pro looks almost identical to this. Okay, lens moves in and out fine. Lens glass looks good. Hello. So, uh, let's try taking a picture. Flash fires? Looks pretty good. Oh, they said that this will take 420 shots uh, at full charge with full charge batteries, so it's interesting. It's more than I would have expected. So a little bit of wear around the corners on this camera. Uh, that will affect the value a little bit. Not a ton of value, just like that DSC S500 that wasn't working from earlier. Uh, we'd be looking at a value of this camera in the $35 to $40 range. Okay, next up. Okay, we've got a generic 16x powerful zoom. 44 megapixel camera. Yeah, right. Uh, these have gotten very popular on Amazon, just like so much stuff. It's like the same camera being sold by like 20 different companies. Let's... Oh, it does power on. Most of these use micro SD and their picture quality is terrible. Like if you imagine like the Tamagotchi pets or the, those little guys, if something like that could take a picture, 
that this would be the quality. Uh, it does take a picture. Let's just leave it at that. It does take a picture. So normally I just donate these to like uh, a local nonprofit. And for kids and stuff, they're still kind of fun to shoot with and you can at least make some memories with them, but optically, pretty poor quality. Ooh, okay. Under this main layer of bubble wrap, we're getting into some good stuff. I'm gonna, I'm gonna dig down, dig down deep as Mark Cohn likes to say, and uh, find one of these. We've got a DSLR camera. Let's go ahead and mix it up a little bit. We've got a Canon Rebel XSI DSLR camera, I think 10 megapixel, with a Canon 24 to 85 USM lens. This is not the kit lens. It's not the lens that normally comes with this camera. Normally the kit lens is just an 18 to 55. So what do I notice immediately? We're missing the eye cup, not a big deal. We're missing the black uh, USB cover door, very common. Uh, it just tends to just kind of flake off after time, as does this little side piece by the SD card slot. Uh, also missing. So that will affect the value. It uses the Canon LPE5 battery. It's got one in here. We'll see if it's got a little bit of charge. And, oh, it has a memory card too. We got an eight gig memory card in there. Let's go ahead and power this sucker on. See if it powers on. It does, it does, it does. Hmm. Not too often do really old batteries that have been in there for very long uh, actually work. So maybe someone actually used this at some point recently. Go ahead and format the card and let's slap on the lens and see if we can take a picture. The lens zoom works well. And I looked at the glass just briefly, and the glass actually looks quite good, too. And let's try taking a picture. Flash pops. Focus works. And flash fires. Okay. That looks good. So normally what I would do in a situation like this, where the lens actually has a little more value with the body, is actually separate them if I were to sell these. So I would sell the Canon Rebel XSI body. You're looking in the $60 range, um, but the Canon 24 to 85 USM lens in good working condition like this one is, uh, you'd be looking at a value actually more in the $80 range for this lens. So $1680, $140 for the bundle. Not bad. Okay, with that camera, uh, we just hit north of $400 in projected value, and I paid about $275 for the lot. Once you factor in shipping costs and expenses uh, and eBay fees, if I sell most of my items on eBay, uh, we're getting we're just a little north of that break-even point. Uh, let's go ahead and keep moving here. We've got a Kodak EasyShare C663. And this is a AA powered, like eight, maybe megapixel camera. Kodak released like 12 years ago. Okay, double A's go in there, and it's got the on off toggle on the top. Lens moves out. Maybe 6 megapixel actually. Okay, that looks good. And let's try the flash. Flash fires. This is actually in pretty good shape. Honestly, uh, I see this camera in a generally pretty poor condition, just generally because of its age and overall use, as well as the fact that the battery door on this isn't super strong, so a lot of the times the battery door is broken, making the camera not very usable. You'd be looking at a value of this in good working condition of around $35 to $40. Okay, next up, we've got a Canon PowerShot SD450. Little metal-bodied Canon PowerShot uh, five megapixels that was released 15, 15-ish years ago, I believe. Uses the Canon MB4L battery, very common battery type for Canon. So we'll go ahead and slide that in there. Turn it on. There we go. Turns on. Lens moves in and out. The LCD has some impact marks, uh, quite a few actually. Let's see if you'll be able to see that. So we've got impact marks here and here, and then there's also a little bit of bleed through on the LCD over here. 
and around the LCD when we turn the camera off, which I'll show you in a second, how about now? Uh, there's a substantial amount of surface wear to the screen. So none of that should affect the actual picture taken, but it is something cosmetically that I would note if I were to sell this button. And buttons have some wear as well. So this is in pretty rough shape, but it is working. Uh, in excellent working condition, uh, I've seen this sell for 75 to 100. However, in the condition that this is, pretty nominal value, I would probably list this and sell it for around 25 to 30. Okay, next up, we've got a bridge camera. We have a Nikon Coolpix L330 camera with a 26x optical zoom. Let's check the AA tray. Oh, there's a memory card, but we got two gig. No AA batteries, but the battery tray looks good. Load them up. Green light should come on on the top, it did. Got menu turned on. Lens moves out. Lens glass looks great, just need to clean it up a little bit. And I use a microfiber cloth for cleaning. I've gone through and tried so many different microfiber cloths because I clean so much glass. And uh, I've settled on a, a 30 pack that works pretty good for me and I go through them pretty quickly because the more dust and grime you get on there, um, it makes cleaning a little bit difficult and when you wash them they lose their microfiber cleaning capability at least from my experience so uh, we'll use them for different things but for glass cleaning I just use them one time and I'll have a link down in the description below for that if you're interested and I sell the Nikon Coolpix L330 quite a bit this is the little brother of the Nikon Coolpix L340 which is a very popular camera and very similar performance wise you're looking at a value of this of about 80 bucks on a website like eBay in the United States all right, we just hit 550 with that last camera, and the target is 600, and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six cameras left, including two more DSLR cameras. Oh, nice. Okay, so we've got a Canon Rebel T3i DSLR camera here, and it's got kind of an unusual lens on it. We've got a Canon 28 millimeter f2.8 lens. And this is close to a wide angle lens, not so much on an APS-C body like the T3i, but if you shot it with a full frame, it's a, it's a nice lens, pretty close to what the eye sees, uh, kind of in that 28 to 35 millimeter range. It's got the distance meter right here, which is a nice touch, just like the 50 millimeter 1.8 original. Uh, let's power it on and see if it works. It's got an old battery in here. I'll trade this out. It uses the Canon LPE8 battery. Right, I got a new, new recharged one ready to go. Power's on. And let's see if it works. A little bit noisy, and that's common. A little bit of motor noise. And this is a cool little lens, actually. Uh, not so great for video, but if you're just still shooting and uh, you want a decent EF lens, I like the Canon 28 millimeter. Cool. Okay. And let's check out the glass on this. And what I look for in here is any scratches on the front, any scratches on the rear element. And this looks good. We'll get the glass cleaned up a little bit. Actually, this is in really nice shape. Sometimes with age and depending on the location in humid environments, you get some stickiness on this rubber wheel here. Um, but this actually looks quite nice. So in good working condition, very good working condition, apart from the lens noise, you're looking at a value of about 125 on the lens. And the Rebel T3i body, I believe this is 18 megapixels, you're looking at a value of about 125. If you pair it with a different lens, like an 18 to 55 IS2 lens or a 55 to 250, you'd be looking at a value of in the $200 range. But just the body alone, uh, yeah, not 125, maybe a little bit more range. So 125, 125, you're looking at 250 uh, for this. And normally if it's a more specialized lens like this, I don't generally sell the body with the lens. I'll sell the body and kit it out with an 18 to 55 and sell that separately. All right, that's excellent. Apart from a few that were having some issues earlier, we're, in, uh, we're looking to be in pretty good shape. 
And this, despite its lower relatively purchase amount of 275, we just hit $800 in projected value and we've still got five cameras left. Okay, next up, we've got a Kodak EasyShare M550 in like this bronze tan color. I sell a lot of Kodak EasyShares. Power's on. Mm, glass looks good. See that? That's a noisy lens. Okay. The flash does fire. So yeah, significant lens noise. Uh, LCD's got some wear and a little bit of dust underneath it. Uh, but the value of this, uh, not very big. We're looking at in the 30 to $40 range. I'm gonna go ahead and say 35 on this one. Now we've got four cameras left. Ooh, Fujifilm FinePix XP130. And this is a waterproof digital camera that Fujifilm released eight years ago or so. Uh, and it's waterproof down to 60 feet actually uses the same battery. Well, Fujifilm's equivalent, which is the NP45. Power's on. I didn't have it in the right way. Silly me. And let's see. There was actually some sort of recall on this, but just on the charger, like maybe overheating or something. I remember that. Takes a picture, flash fires, and this camera is in good working condition. So the value of the XP130 in good working condition, uh, you're looking in the $100 to $125 range, depending on what accessories are included. Uh, I'll go ahead and pair this with a, with a charger and a memory card, and you'd be looking at a value of in the $120 range. Okay, what do we got here? We've got an Olympus Stylus Tough 6020, another waterproof camera, released actually a little bit earlier than that last one we were looking at. And this is, I think, a 10, maybe, 10 megapixel camera. Oh, 14 megapixel. Uses the Olympus Li50B battery. Got one right here. Cosmetically looks pretty good. And when we powered on this little metal cover right here, lens cover, we'll just lift up. No? No power? Okay. Uh, let's just try another battery real quick. Okay, and if this doesn't power on, then the camera is dead. That doesn't happen too often, but occasionally, like water could have leaked in there, especially with waterproof cameras, and the camera just won't power on. No power. So this camera's dead and no value. If this was in good working condition still, you're looking in the $40 to $60 range. Maybe a little bit more, depending on what's included. Dang. Okay, we've got two left. We've got a Nikon Coolpix S6000. And we got Tomator on the front, if any of you are Cars fans. Speaking of cartoons, I wanted to show you something. Something that's pretty, pretty awesome, I think. Take a look at this. Speaking of cartoons, this really, really sweet Pokemon card that my, my son made me. And I really like it because one of my main attacks is using a camera flash. And I've got cameras on my shoulders and cameras in my hands. So I thought that was pretty awesome. Just wanted to share it with you guys. All right. Back to the camera, we've got the Nikon Coolpix F6000 here, and it uses the ENL12 battery. Throw it in there, power it on. Power's on. Ooh, a little bit of dust inside, but more importantly, we've got some pretty serious lens glass scratches on the front there. So you can see them right there. And that is going to affect the value in a pretty big way. Uh, if this does take pictures and otherwise works, um, it's not going to have a ton of value, but let's go ahead and give it a shot. The problem with having deeper scratches like that in the front of the optical area is it can actually refract the light differently than the glass around it, which can seriously affect the picture quality. So it does take a picture, the flash does fire. Um, I won't assign a value on this one, maybe 15 or 20 bucks. In really good working condition, this camera sells for 80 to 100 or more. Uh, and just three or four years ago, 
you'd be looking at probably $40. So this one's gone up in value quite a bit. We've got one camera left and we're at $955 of projected value. So hopefully with this one camera, we can get over a thousand. Wow, interesting. Okay, so I've only seen this a couple times in the last seven years and I've sold 22,000 plus digital cameras, uh, lenses and camcorders. And that's a Kodak EF uh, mount. DSLR camera lens, and it's a Kodak 80 to 210. So we'll go ahead and test the autofocus on this. The body is a Canon Rebel XS, which came out just a little bit before that Canon Rebel XSI that we looked at earlier. And I think this is a 10 megapixel camera. Uses a Canon LPE5 battery. And let's go ahead and see. I've got a battery in there, but I've got a charged one in here as well. And let's see if the power's on. And it has a memory card too. We got a two gig memory card in there. Let's see if it powers on. Does power on, nice. And let's go ahead and test the lens and see if it works. This Kodak, a little bit noisy. Oh, autofocus is working well though. Oh yeah, flash fires. Okay, cool. So this camera is working fine. The lens is working fine. The grip has wear. So you'll see a little bit of finish loss here. Very common with the XS and the XSI. Just is what it is. Um, but otherwise it's in a good working condition. So not a ton of value uh, on these. It's a great beginner student DSLR camera. Um, with the lens and a charger, a memory card, and a USB cable for the Canon Rebel XS or the Canon Rebel XS, I would probably price it at in the $85 range. So we'll finish with $85, and that will have us just crossing over the $1,000 mark from this $275 buy. A big win in my book. And check out this video for another unboxing that I did that also has some great cameras in it. Don't forget to get out there and have some fun. Get some pictures taken.